So you know what you want to model, you just don't know how to do it. Not a problem. Now I'm a very firm believer that if you want to help anyone long term, you don't tell them what to do, you tell them how to do it. So unless you were building my exact character, I don't think that it's very useful for me to tell you point for point exactly where to model. What's important this tutorial are the techniques that I'm about to show you and learning to identify when to use them. Alright, when modeling human characters, I recommend using smooth shading. You can do that by clicking on the object, go into vertex data, normals, and auto smooth. Here you can also change what angles are considered smooth, or you could right click and set shading to smooth. Whatever floats your boat. The point of doing this is to leave us the ability to decide when to highlight crease lines in our shape. Last video we created the rims for her boots and gloves, but you might have noticed around the rims it might look a little weird and mushy, which obviously isn't good because we want those to look like separate objects. Anytime you want to highlight the crease of an object, press 2 to switch to line mode, hold alt and left click the loop you want to crease. You can also hold shift and do it again to select multiple loops, but once you've selected everything, right click and mark as sharp. And there we go. A little better. Might not be perfect, but don't worry, we'll fix that real easy in the end. Okay, so when you cut the design lines into your character, you have probably noticed this really throws off the topology. Now I really recommend worrying about the topology after the design is done, but one thing that you should avoid early on when you're working with mid to low poly modeling is vertex clusters. A cluster is just a bunch of points that are close together. So stuff like this, this and this are things that you're going to want to fix early if you can. There are two ways to fix a cluster. You can merge points one at a time or you can average multiple points into one. So how do you know which technique to use? Well remember the most important thing is that we don't break the shape. So if you see two points that are close together and they're really following almost the exact same direction, like if you deleted one of the points and the line would probably still be exactly the same, then I would just merge them together. So one to active, check auto merge, set it to something like 0.001, turn snap on, and make sure that it's set to vertex. Then just drag them into each other like this. So that's the first thing that I would go through the model and fix. Anytime you have two points on one straight line, you should probably merge them. Now, if there are three points together, or if instead of moving one point to another point's position, you want them both to meet somewhere in the middle, that's when we would select the points, press M, and merge them at the center. If we combine this with the double G slide technique, it's a great way to quickly clean up clusters that would have made some inconsistent shading. Now, another really useful technique is dissolve in targets. As you start to merge points together and clean up the topology, you will notice that some of the lines start getting drawn where they don't need to be. For example, we really don't need this line here anymore. Now the traditional way to fix this would be to go to line select, click it, and delete it. Then you would select all the points around it and press F to fill. But that would be the long way. The easier way is to select the line and instead of deleting it, you dissolve it. See that? Way faster. You can also do this with points and technically in dire faces too. And while we're on this topic, if you ever want to create a new point on an existing line, select the points around it, right click and subdivide. You will then be able to double G and slide it around where you need it to go. And if at any point you need to detach a point from its surroundings, you can select it and press V. And of course, you can always use E to extrude a new point from an old one. And those are the main techniques that you're going to use to clean up point clusters in low poly modeling. Snap merge, center merge, double G sliding, cut and dissolve. Once you've cleaned up most of the clusters without breaking the shape, the next step is to add some depth. And the easiest way to do that is with normal based extrusion. Let's pretend you wanted to give your character a choker and you created detail lines around that area. So if you wanted to pop out, what I would do is go to line mode, select all the lines that outline that area Area, right click, mark as sharp, select the rest of the shape, then press Alt E and extrude along normals. Then just use your mouse to pull the shape out. If you find that some points that should be in the middle are off center, click that point, press N and under item, under X, set it to zero. All right, now I recommend marking all the design lines left as sharp and selecting all the faces that you need to pop out of the suit. This might be a little easier if you just press C to activate brush select. Then you could just hold down left click and highlight all the faces that fill out the shape. You can scroll up and down to increase the size of your brush, deselect with middle click, and right click when you're done. Then press Alt E, extrude along normals, and maybe hold shift to give you a little more control. Nice. All right, the last thing that I want to teach you is joining two objects together. So we are going to attach this shoe to this leg. Now I have taken the liberty of creating these heels for you because something deep down inside tells me that you probably don't have a passion for making shoes because I definitely don't, but I had to. So if you don't want to make your own, feel free to download mine from the description and import it as an OBJ into your Blender file. Regardless, if you have two objects that you want to join together, click the shoe, then shift click the body and press E to join. The order here 
here is important. The object that you click last is the main object. So if you click the body last, the shoe becomes part of the body. But if you click the shoe last, then the body becomes part of the shoe. Do not f this up. Because if your body has a bunch of shape keys and drivers, and you pick the shoe last, your body will probably lose its drivers because it's going to adopt the shoe's attributes instead. After you've joined the objects, when you go into edit mode, you will be able to snap and merge points together, or press F to connect them as usual. Conversely, if you want to separate one object into two separate ones, for example if we wanted the top part of this shoe to be its own object, click, go to edit mode, select the part that you want to separate, then right click, separate, and by selection. And when you tab back to object mode, you will see that this part is no longer part of the same object. Okay, now the very, very last thing that you need to know is how to average normals. You might have noticed that the shading for your object might be a little weird, and that is because Blender does not automatically recalculate shadows correctly when you cut new faces or you merge points. So when you finished all your work, the last thing that you always have to do is click your object, tab to edit mode, select all with A, go to mesh, normals, average, face area, and you're done. See, now we've got that beautiful shading again. Again, I've never heard of any 3D software that doesn't automatically do this for you, but uh, whatever. You gotta do it manually in Blender. All right, well, those are basically all the techniques that I use when I'm making characters. Obviously, there's more, and this is just an example body, but for your real character, you'd probably spend a little more time adding extra lines of detail and layers and color, but all that's up to you. Hope that helps, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to ring that bell, otherwise you'll never know when I upload new stuff. And as always, hope you have a fantastic, Dang, I'll see you around.